I'm still at a loss of words from yesterday. I can't really make any sense of what's going on here. Almost seems like all the rules this year are just thrown out the window and we're just basically flying by the seat of our pants. I mean, a second yard of mine to flood away like that is a little bit overwhelming. And I can't make any sense of it. The yard I did put them into has an old abandoned farmyard and there was a drainage ditch through the middle of that off the field. But that field, I mean, the watershed's only off that quarter section, like it's just draining a wet spot. The watershed for that area is on the other side into the creek. So it isn't a big drainage basin. But I guess when you get six inches of rain overnight on saturated soils, all bets are off and, and it is what it is. So there's a run, like like this is an old farm site and there's a water run that goes through it and it's to drain a wet spot within this quarter section over there. So it's not a huge draw for a watershed. And my first impression is six inches of rain. Yeah, that's a lot of rain to drop overnight. And it just, you know, too much water. But something else happened, and I didn't quite see this until I came back here today. I think what happened was actually, I noticed the farmers cleaned the ditches out. And I bet you, I bet you, there's about four farmers here, and I bet you they've drained into that ditch to be able to drain their land properly down and away. And with that six inches of rain, I think it was just too much, of course. And it did the job of getting the water off their land into the ditch. But I thought the water come this way off the land. That water come down the ditch and hit the road. The facility couldn't handle the capacity and backed it up this way. So the water actually come this way into my yard. Flooded the yard itself, and I do have it in a low spot here, obviously. Higher up than the drainage there, but low enough that it pooled water as it backed up. And the reason why my hives were against the road over there wasn't the wash of water that come through. It was the hundred click winds we had that night that pushed the yard as it floated in the water. So that's what happened. And I didn't see that. So the reason why I point that out is I just want to make a point here. I've been keeping bees in this spot for quite a while now. And I've managed this yard according to the conditions. It's a nice little lull where I have them. That's why I have them here. This yard is low. It's not the lowest part in the yard. But I have it here because that's the best spot for it. I've never had any type of overland flooding ever in this yard. Except I've never had the facility change on me. When I mean facility, I mean the land management changed on me. So instead of just expecting the water to come down this run as it typically would, now there's a larger volume of water running down this ditch because the land improvements made over there. And the main culprit is six bloody inches of rain overnight. But because of that, the facility couldn't handle that capacity, that volume of water, and then backed up into my bee yard. 
and that's why it was so unusual to me because I've never experienced it that because these changes have been made and I didn't quite realize what had happened. So now that I know that, I'm going to add that to my huge bowl of knowledge here and experience and move this yard to be able to manage that circumstance. That unknown caught me off guard and flooded my bee yard. And this is in a way which is happening to our entire beekeeping industry. We're seeing changes within the landscape, you know, whether it be land management like this, drainage and such, or uh, the technology used within agriculture right now, or the changes within development itself, changes within the weather, you know, changes within the pests, like all the disease that are influencing our hives right now. All these changes are happening. And we as beekeepers are having a heck of a time adapting and evolving to all those changes. All this influence is down onto our hives. We don't see it happening until it's too late, right? And we see the aftermath, be it dead hives, or flooded out bee yards, or sick bees, so all these things coming together. And our industry is having trouble adapting and evolving to all these changes. That is the number one problem right now within our industry, is we are just having a heck of a time trying to evolve as everything else evolves around us. And our industry needs a little bit of help because of that. We need to be able to catch up, for one thing, to agriculture. As they're making all the advancements and changes and adoption of technologies, it's influencing our, our way we do our business here. And we just need a little bit of help to be able to recognize what's going on and then adapt and evolve that to what we're doing here as a beekeeping industry. And we can do it. Just we need some time, we need some effort to be able to help us do it. As an industry, we need to approach this the right way, though. We need to approach this as a collaborative effort as we approach agriculture and government and society just to help explain to them and recognize our problem, that we need assistance to be able to make all this work. You look at those flags that go off when there's issues that are going on. With all these changes, are we changing too quickly? You know, what are the consequences? Just like Corey Stevens always says, He's a VSH breeder down in Missouri. He said, as you're breeding, you're making these changes and you're not looking at the advantages or disadvantages. You're looking at the trade-offs, right? And that's the same thing as we're developing our landscape, as we're managing our lands, you know, as we're just a very fact and act of society. We have all these trade-offs. And what are these trade-offs? And we have to be able to manage those trade-offs adequately and appropriately otherwise they'll eventually just catch up to you and you know it won't be just flooded out bee yards which will be the consequence that's just the way i look at things that's one of the reasons why i involve myself within the association and you know i'm a champion of agriculture I feel that there isn't enough of that right now. And I don't believe in pointing fingers and saying, you gotta change, you gotta change, you gotta change. And I think we need to collaborate together, identify those issues and work to solve the issues for the betterment of everybody, right? Easy to say, but all it takes is a little bit of effort. That's all we gotta do, just little pieces of effort here and there. And just understanding the situation so then if that drainage ditch is going to be made to be able to protect that land, I mean, the six inches of land would have got off that property, would have saved that crop. Just the facility here can't handle that volume of water and ultimately it flooded out this little lowland. What does the hell does that mean? Well, there's a beekeeper down here. So if I can understand that and understand what's going on and the potential risk to it, I'm not going to put my bees right there. I'm going to put my bees right there you know problem solved zero conflict